but as the num the um, standard deviation of the number of pets, it's not a percent. All right, and that is it for 2007B number two. 2004B number three. Let's move on. Last but not least, here's another one that mixes chapters. The first part is going to be from chapter two, and then we'll get to chapter seven down here on part C, just to let you know. So part A, we've got a machine that is filling carts full of ore or bauxite. I don't even know what bauxite is, but that's okay. The most important part is we know the mean is 70 tons. The standard deviation is 0.9 ton. Um, we want to know um, what's the probability of getting a randomly selected single car that has 70.7 .7 tons or more. So the probability that X is greater than greater than or equal to 70.7. And uh, they do tell us somewhere that it's normally distributed. So that's going to be a normal CDF problem. We've done several of those. Um, I didn't do as many of them in chapter two because it was hard to find ones that did th just this and not moving on to chapter seven stuff. So here's another example of that. Chapter two is often mixed with other chapters. So chapter two stuff first. 70.7, subtract the mean, which is 70, divide by the standard deviation, which is 0.9. We get 0.7 over 0.9, which is 0.7 repeating. And that's my z-score, so I need to find the probability of z being greater than or equal to that 0.7 repeating. If you're going to round it, don't round it too close. So don't put 0.8, put 0.78 or 0.778 or something like that. Or better yet, on your calculator, just type a lot of sevens, and that would be the most accurate. Or type seven ninths. So many choices. Um, so normal CDF, we're going to do greater than, so we need to put the 0.7 repeating first, and then the 999. And I got 0.218, or 21.8%. So then, part B, we've seen this a lot this year in different chapters. Um, suppose that a randomly selected car is 70.7. That's what we just found the probability of. Would that make us suspect that the loading mechanism is overfilling? Is this evidence that the true mean is greater than 70? No, it's not, because 21.8% is pretty likely. Um, so I'm going to say, no, 21.8 uh, is greater than 5%. So it's reasonably likely to happen by chance. So I would not be suspicious at all. However, the next one um, might come out different. So let's, I don't want to give it away too much, but now we're taking a random sample of 10 cars and the probability that that random sample of 10 has a mean, that's X bar, weight of 70 tons or more. So now I'm doing the probability that X bar, not X, is greater than or equal to 70.7. I'm still going to find a z-score, but what's different about this one is I have to adjust that standard deviation to allow for the fact that it's a random sample of 10. So I wanted to do one more example like this. 70.7 minus the 70, like before. What's different is the bottom, because the bottom, we're going to have to do that dividing by square root of n thing. So we're going to do 0.9 divided by the square root of 10 on the bottom. And that's going to change my distribution to be a lot narrower um, and change my probability. I still have 0.7 on the top. When I did the bottom, I got 0.2846. Divide them, and I get a z-score of 2.46. That's kind of a clue right there. Already bigger than two standard deviations away from the mean. So that's going to change my probability quite a bit. Uh, the probability that z is greater than 2.46. And that would be another normal CDF. You're seeing a theme here, I hope, of 2.46 and 999. Almost exactly what we did up above, except notice my z-score is different now. So I got a really small probability, 0 0.00696, which is like 0.7% approximately. So then the same question as part D, kind of. Um, is this surprising? Well, yes, of course it's surprising because 0.7% is really small. So yes, 0.7% uh, 
is way smaller than 0.05 or 5% in general. Um, so this is unlikely to happen by chance. And um, that means that probably it means my machine is overfilling. I'm going to put this in context and say, um, this gives me evidence that the machine is overfilling. So one cart being that big was not strong enough evidence, but 10 carts with an average that big is definitely strong evidence. You can always get stronger evidence um, by doing a larger sample. And then I'm going to take a minute and look back at that one that we had on the chapter two. Pardon me while I look for it. Maybe I won't do this right now. I'd like to. Yeah, maybe I won't be doing that right now. Okay, I'll make a separate video about that because it'll take me a minute to find it. Never mind. I will see you on the next video.